And we're back. We're about ready to start the second half of this ball game. Warren Central and Bowling Green. What has been labeled as one of the most anticipated matchups of the 1991 season. And you have it here on Store Cable. Store Cable High School Game of the Week is being sponsored by our good friends at the Greenwood Ford BMW located on Scottsville Road in Bowling Green. From El Donaldson Stadium on the campus of Bowling Green High School, I'm Tom Donnelly along with Tim Taylor and along with the rest of our fine Store Cable football broad telecast group. We are proud to bring you what for the sixth consecutive season, high school football on Store Cable 6. Imagine next week, talk about both these balls. Those will be, I would say, taking a break. But I'd like to mention that Bowling Green High School will be on the road at home once again next week. And they will take on Clarksville, Tennessee. And then Warren Central will be at home as they'll take on the Greenwood Gators for their second consecutive district matchup. And it'll be the first time that those two ball clubs have met with district title hopes or district aspirations on the line. So about ready to get going. Beautiful L. Donaldson Stadium. And I believe, Dom, this game is living up to expectations. It has built it up before this game as we have a 14-7 halftime lead here for Warren Central as they prepare to kick off to the Bowling Green Purples. And if you missed any of the first half action, don't threat. You can see it tomorrow, Tuesday, September 17th at 4 p.m. And as the replay date, for Bowling Green Warren Central. And as always, is proudly sponsored by the good folks at Greenwood Ford BMW. And Sean Taylor goes back deep to receive the punt, as you can see the replay dates. And here we go. Lima Boyd, and that's number 20, Jeremy Button, of the up men for the Bowling Green Purples. And Metcalf's kick, low line drive. And in the end zone, and that will be stopped. And that was really, really close. Looks like he caught that right about the uh, one yard line. I didn't see him ever down the ball though there, Don. Well, the head referee, Richard Morse, says that he was in the end zone. So that will automatically bring the ball back to the 20. That is an automatic rule. If the ball goes in the end zone or caught in the end zone, the ball has to come out. That's just basically for safety's sake. It's a good rule. As David Clark brings the Bowling Green Purples to the line to start the second half. So it's first and 10 from the 20. Handoff goes up the middle. Sean Taylor, I believe, there with a the carry. And yes, it is. And in on the tackle was Honshell. And about three or four other ones there. One of those group tackle things there on that one, Dom. In the first half, it was the defensive prowess of Tom Napier. Napier was all over the place. We were mentioning his name. Clark. With a keeper. Going out. Fakes the pitch. He cuts back up to the middle. He's up One man to beat. He brought it. Oh, Napier again with a touchdown saving tackle. Credit Clark. What a play. Comes out with bouncing off five or six tacklers. David Clark with a big run. And Tom Napier comes up with a touchdown saving tackle. But credit Clark came out bouncing off three or four tackler, tacklers. And like to remind you, on the last offensive series for Bowling Green, it was Tom Napier in the face of Clark. But that time, it was Napier catching the heels of Clark, saving a touchdown. Ball is marked in midfield. Boy, Coming come with on. Taylor. Taylor, he gets to down to the 40, close to first down yardage. It'll be close. Honshell on the tackle along with Gilbert. Close to another first down. Maybe close enough to measure. And no, they're going to say first down. So two back-to-back -back first downs here by the Purples to start the second half. They marked the ball just inside the 40-yard line. And I'd also like to... If I can get our camera crew right below us is the former head football coach at the University of Kentucky, Jerry Claiborne. So he's in attendance at tonight's ball game. We just saw him down at the end here. Play up the middle. Goes Bunton. Josh Jennings, number 55, there on the tackle. 
Check that that was Lehman Boyd. So I'm kind of curious, what does uh, Coach Claiborne think of the Wildcats now? And they're going into second season now, Bill Curry. Be interesting talking to him about that. Especially after the sort of sluggish game they had against Miami of Ohio last weekend. Mm -hmm. Clark with the keeper. Keeps it. He's got room on the outside. Oh, and he slips and falls. And he slides down. So he's close to first down yardage. Number 23, Mignana Gilbert there on the tackle. And that should set up a third down and short play for the Purples. And it looks like he lost his footing. And I'm kind of surprised by that because we went down there. It's the first home game for the Purples. So um, this is the first game played on this uh, Donaldson Stadium turf. And it's in excellent condition. They've done a real good job with it, with this new turf. Pitch back. Taylor. Taylor, first, first down, down and more. Down to the 24-yard line. Tackle by Honshell, Josh Honshell, the 5'9", 146-pound senior. And the stop made for the Dragons was LaShawn Turner coming out of the outside linebacker position. So it's first and 10 now for the Purples. The Purples on their first possession of the second half. They trail by seven with 9.17 remaining in the third. Handoff goes up the middle. That's Boyd. And Boyd gets close to the 20. It'll be Mark Shaw to about, I would say, the 21 and a half yard line as they umpile everybody. Josh Jennings, number 55, comes up with the stop for the Dragons. Bowling Green's really come out here, moving the ball real well here early in the second, or third quarter there, Dom. They must have really did some good adjustment by the coaches inside the locker room during the halftime to come out Got their game plan back on what they wanted to do, and they're really moving the ball well now. They line up. Running Clark on the quarterback keeper, still on his feet, and gets down. Chad Dillard is there with a tackle for the Warren Central Dragons. As Bowling Green's really moving the ball down to the 11-yard line now. One thing I'm noticing here, Tim, is you notice all the trouble they were having with Tom Napier. They are running away from his side. They're, they've been running in the first half. They're running a lot of things over to the strong side on the right side. But they're lining all their power side, power backs and everybody. They're going to the left side of the field away from Napier. That's Clark. They're going to the right side with Button. And so Button. A nice block there by number 70. Brandon Jewell there on Napier. Put Napier down allowed allowed me to pick up about five yards on that carry. Ryan Bybee on the tackle for Warren Central. So it's second down in about six. Ball marked at the seven. And there's an official timeout. I believe it's an equipment problem with Bunton. I believe it's his helmet. Michael Lane, number nine, checks into the game for Bowling Green. As we can see by our good eyes, it's the, the strap on his helmet that was broken. There's a good shot of the big crowd we have on hand here tonight. Excellent crowd, as always, at Donaldson Stadium when these two ball clubs go at it. Second down and six, pitch back. Sean Taylor got the touchdown in the first. At least tackled by Honshell. As I said, Sean Taylor picked up the touchdown there in the second quarter to tie the game up. Almost broke that one open in for another touchdown. And a good mixture, and I would have to say that whatever Dan Haley said to his offensive line, it is working. They're getting off the ball. As you can see, they are blowing the defensive line of uh, defensive front, that is, for Warren Central about one or two yards back. It's a big play, third and three from the four-yard line. They can get a first down with Alex Storney, a touchdown. It's close. Let's see if they mark it. Down let's see and if they it short of the goal line. They should have the first down, but let's see if it's a touchdown. If they're waiting with such a delay. LaShawn Turner there on the first one to make contact. It's short, but it'll be a first down, I would have to say. First it and is. go. So it'll be first and goal. First Inches away goal from goal pay dirt for the Purples. They trail by seven. So the Dragons have their backs against a proverbial wall just about six inches from the goal line. The Purples will line up in the wishbone. Three backs in the backfield. 
Clark under center. One to Taylor. Taylor touchdown. goes skyward and touchdown purple. Touchdown carry by number 32. He fumbled the ball, but he broke the plane. So it is a touchdown. I believe Bowling Green might have even landed on the ball anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. So the Purples have drawn first blood. Here in the second half, they trail only by one. It now rests on the foot of Jay Burr. If this game's tied or not, good snap. High snap. Kick up. And it's good. So a 6.27 remaining in the third. Your score, all knotted up at 14 apiece. Bowling Green did what they had to do there. Coming in to get a good sustaining drive there to start the second half off right for them and get on the scoreboard to tie this game up. So an impressive drive right off the bat here in the second half for the Purples. And now let's see what happens with Warren Central when they get the ball for, for their first crack. See if they can respond. And we said Bowling Green did a good job of adjusting on offense. Now let's see how good their defense adjusted during halftime too. To see if they can stop Warren Central here on the first drive of their, their first possession of the second half. So here we go. Burr ready to kick off. High kick, night, right in the corner, right at the one. On shell. He's trying to get across outside. Field. And he doesn't get to the 20 yard line. Stopped by Robert Johnson. So excellent kick by Burr. Low, line drive kick, but into the coffin corner. As Han Shell gets a penalty it. flag, I believe, on the play. It could be a face masking call there, maybe. I don't know if he just dropped the penalty flag or what it was. We'll try and sort it out here. Let's see what the call is. Face masking. It is face mask against the Purples. So the Purples had the Dragons pin, but a penalty flag leers its ugly head once again. And it will give Warren Central a little bit more maneuvering room. Big 15 yard penalty there. Take it out to about the 34 yard line. So it was a more severe variety. It wasn't unintentional so it's a first and ten instead of from the 19 it's all the way up to the 34 as hooks and napier line up in the backfield behind terry davis the quarterback out of the eye formation napier up the middle full back there goes napier he's going he's not finishing he could be all the way he's gone no flags on the play and he's gone he's at the touchdown there's what I said earlier, he almost broke one earlier. If he gets in that secondary, him against the defensive back, there's no way that defensive back's gonna bring Tom Napier down. As you can hear, the Ward Central faithful going wild here at Donaldson Stadium. They once again lead by six, 20 to 14. At the six minute mark here in the third. And Dom, I said just at the beginning, let's see how Warren Central comes out and responds after the touchdown, and they responded big with a 66-yard touchdown run by Tom Napier. Big extra point here by Metcalf. The hole by Davis, the kick is up. And it is good. So just like that, the Dragons answer the touchdown by Bowling Green, and they have regained the lead, 21 to 14. And Dom, Tom Napier, 6-1. 210-pound senior, really showed some speed there after he got out beyond the defensive backs and sprinted through about the last 30, 35 yards, sprinting away from all the defensive backs who are usually quicker than a fullback would be. But Napier outran them all. He was down there. He busted up right up the gut. He got two good blocks from his offensive line. He got in the secondary, and he was gone. He had one man to beat, and that was Lehman Boyd. But... I would have to say, just a little bit too much a fleet of foot was Napier. So Napier doing it on defense in the first half. The second half, he scores the go-ahead touchdown to regain the lead for the Dragons. 66-yard touchdown run by Tom Napier. And now it's a chance to see how Bowling Green responds to Warren Central's answers to their touchdown. 
And we said Bowling Green was the team that strikes quick. Well, Warren Central just proved us wrong with a big, quick 66-yard touchdown run. Metcalf, good kick himself inside the five. Mitchell Dunn with the re return. He's got some blockers. He gets across the 20 up to about the 23-yard line. So that's where the purpose will begin to see how they can answer. Number 34, Tim Parker there on the stop. So it has been everything that was promised. An exciting ball game. 5.53 remaining in the third quarter of play. Warren Central leads 21-14. to 14. This has been a, one of those back and forth kind of games there tonight, Dom. Warren Central get the lead. Bowling Green comes back and responds, ties the game up. Warren Central scores again. Bowling Green comes, ties it up. And now Warren Central scored again, and it's taking a seven-point lead here with 5.53 to go in the third quarter. We have a timeout on the field. As we mentioned in the first half, the uh, officials are going to give the players a chance to take a break. Gives us a break. It's been an exciting uh, first uh, six minutes here in the second half, and... It's been a dandy so far. I thought last Friday night's game with Warren East versus Owensboro was gonna was a very good game. And I didn't think there'd be any game to be able to top it this year, but we've proven that wrong right here tonight as we got a real good dandy game here with Bowling Green and Warren East Central. And we have a host of games coming up. Our next, um, I'd like to remind you, you can see the replay of this ball game if you missed any of the action. And don't threat, we have it for you tomorrow, Tuesday, September the 17th at 4 p.m. All the action can be seen here on Store Cable 6. And as always, all the action is brought to you, proudly sponsored by our good friends at the Greenwood Ford BMW, located on Scottsville Road here in Bowling Green. First and 10 now. Clear David Parkles. Parkles. Clark, back, and he's in the grasp. And they didn't blow the whistle. Passes off the punt. That's number 55, Josh Jennings, who had him wrapped up in the backfield. And Brian Bybee comes up with the tackle. Pick up about three yards on that play, so they turned a negative about four or five yard loss into a positive three or four yard gain on that play. And there's not an in the grasp rule per se as they have in the um, NFL here in the Kentucky High School Athletic Association. But there should have been, he could have been really seriously hurt on that play. Second down and seven. Offside on the right side, number two. It's Sean Sweet there jumping offside for Bowling Green. So Sweet gets a little bit anxious. But this has been a fairly uh, penalty-free ball game. Haven't seen a lot of penalty flags. So two well-coached teams battling out here on a beautiful Friday night in Bowling Green. I was kind of surprised that on the first play, though, they would moved the ball real effectively on the ground there on the first drive. The first thing they try to do is go back to the air. I don't know if they try to thought they'd catch Warren Central a little off guard and go to the air, try to hit them on a big play or not, but the ground game was really working for them there in the very first possession they had in the second half, and then they go to the air. Second down and 12 for the Purples. Back to pass, faking, going off to his left. He's getting pressure. Still going. And oh, he's he still... that type of bubble. And coming up with a big hit was Jeremy Fletcher. And they'll mark him down at that spot. There may have been a question if it may have been um, his arm was forward and it may have been an incomplete pass. But they said that he was marked down at that spot. Well, let's hold the phone here. I believe that's what the call is going to be. Yes, they're going to call that a... An incomplete pass. I don't know how they ought to call that incomplete pass. I didn't see him, his arm go forward. The only thing I saw, he got drilled and the ball come loose. Well, the chief referee, Rich Mo Richard Morris, he was in the backfield, and he did make the signal saying it was a forward pass. Of course, we're way up here atop the, the bleachers here at Bowling Green High, so he's got a better angle of it than we do. So It's third and 11 after an incomplete pass. He's got a man on the fly pattern. That's Boyd. And it's complete for a first down up to about the 44-yard line. Eddie Hockenberry there on the tackle, number 81. Along with Marcus Gilbert for Warren Central. So a big third, big down, big third down conversion for the Purples as they get 
to keep, keep the ball and keep, keep this drive alive. Pick up about 22 yards on that pass pattern. It's first and 10 from the 45. Hand off. That's Button. Jeremy Button. And with the tackle is Napier. That brings a second down and three for Bowling Green. Gained of about six and a half on that play. As they're having to change the balls out quite often here with all the sweat and humidity in the air and stuff. The balls are getting real slippery out there. It's second down and a long three yards. Hand off. Pulls up the middle to Button. First down yardage and a little bit more as he grabs up a nice piece of real estate. LaShawn Turner with the stop. Bowling Green's offensive line is really getting effective now here in the second half. Getting off the ball real quick and Open up big holes for the running backs to run through, making it an easy job for the running backs to do all their, show off their running abilities. 3.23 remaining here in the third. Both teams have scored. The score at halftime was 14-7 Warren Central. Pitch back, goes to Boyd. Boyd's got running room. Close he gets a big down. gain on the first down play. And like Warren Central in the first half, uh, Tim, uh, they're getting big yardage on first down plays. Very much. Especially, I guess, their coaches and staff must have really did a good job of explaining to them what they were doing wrong in the first half so they could correct it here. And they've really done a good job of the correction here in the second half, opening up big holes for the running backs. Dan Haley, one of the best coaches in the state of Kentucky. And his familiar purple hat. Fishing cap, that is. First and 10 at the 25 in Dragon Territory. Jeremy Button there again with the carry. That's three back to three carries in a row for him. Carry by On the tackle was Josh Honshell. That was the worst carry he had, and he gained eight yards on that one. So once again, big yardage. Five and more five plus yardage on all first down plays. And as I said in the first half, that gives you more versatility on your selection of plays for a second down play. So it's second and short, two yards that is. 16 yard line in Dragon Territory. Keeper by Clark, he's got the first down. Barely. Brian, Brian Bobby there with a tackle. Let's see where they spot the ball. At least he had the initial stop there. Check that. I thought he got across to 15. But they'll mark him shy of that spot. I think it, he started sliding on his way down and his knee came down about a yard shy of there. Tim puts you in Dan Haley's spot. You're deep and knocking on the Dragon uh, doorstep. It's third down and one. If you don't get the first down here and you have a very, I would say, feel very comfortable going in with Jay Burrow with a field goal because this, this is in his range. But do you do that or do you go for it? Let's see if that'll happen. Pitch back. It is a first down, maybe more. He may have to come in for an extra point. Oh, look at him carry the line down to the one foot line. What a play by Boyd. Carried about five defensive, back, defensive players for Warren Central all the way down to the one yard line. Jeremy Fletcher, Josh Honshell, and a host of Dragon Tacklers on the play. Hooks gets up slowly for Warren Central. He's coming, checking out of the game now. Looks like he might have a cramp. So it's first and goal for the Dragons. Hand off. And he stopped. No, check that touchdown. I thought he was. I thought he was down shot. too short of it. As you saw it right there, you were right with us. But the referees call him in the end zone, and that's the touchdown. So with 55 seconds remaining in the third, Bowling Green is just one point down, pending on the extra point attempt by Burr. Jay Burr, 175 pound, junior. He's 5'10 in height. And he's all of 5'10, I would have to say. The kick is up. And it's good. 
So as we promised a dandy, 21-21, your score. And as we stressed earlier, Bowling Green did an excellent job at the halftime intermission to get the offensive line in gear, telling them what they were doing wrong in the first half so they could correct it. And they've really been firing off the balls, opening big holes for the running backs. And some good running by the Bowling Green running backs. In particular there, number 20, Jeremy Button, picked up some good yardage on that drive. Bowling Green High School has had the football for almost the entire quarter. They have scored twice here in the third. Central has scored once, but they scored on the first play. They had the football, a 66-yard touchdown run by Tom Napier. Let's say that took maybe about 17 seconds, so that's really the um, the amount of time that they've had the football. And the Bowling Green touchdown was really set up on the second and about 12-yard play pass from David Clark to Le Lehman Boyd, about a 22, 23-yard pickup to give them a first down at midfield. And the rest, they just power drived in for a touchdown. And here's the kick. And let's see. That's Honshell. He's in trouble. And he's out, about out of bounds. Yard line. And it could have been close to a, maybe a necessary roughness. It's Number 49, Lee Thompson, coming on special teams. Almost got away with a late hit. But no harm, no foul. So the Dragons have their backs against the wall. And no big 15-yard penalty this time either to give them even better field position. Bowling Green had them backed up about the 19-yard line last time, but had a big 15-yard face mask penalty to give them the ball up to the 34-yard line before Napier broke open the big 66-yard touchdown run. So 50 seconds remaining here in the third. We're all knotted up at 21 apiece. They have an official timeout going on in the field. Cortez Metcalf. Rest break. Cortez Metcalf come in early in the game for Warren Central and was quarterbacking. But early in the game, Terry Davis, number eight, come in and they move Cortez Metcalf out to receiver and it's been very effective, though, for Warren Central. So, a capacity crowd at Donaldson Stadium. We hope you're enjoying this one here on Story Cable 6. 21-21 your score for the big game between Warren Central and Bowling Green. First and 10 from the 18. Pitch back. Goes Gilbert. Gilbert runs the ball for the first time in the second half. Michael Lane and Jay Burr there on the top stop. A gain of five yards on the play. So it'll be a second down and five. As Midcalf checks out. Number 14, Sam Benson checks in. The 5'8", 158 pound receiver here on the far right. This will most likely be the last play of the quarter. And up the middle. Yeah, that's Napier. Let's check that. With the hut, the attack was made by Mark Hudson. And the run was by Napier. Be about a third, about three yards to go. As they'll have this little break here in action to decide what they want to do here on this third and three play. So that will be when we come back, third and three for the Dragons. And we're all knotted up at 21 apiece. We're going to the fourth, and we'll be back with all the action for the fourth and final stanza in just a moment. Back.